So this beautiful minimal landing page that you see in front of you here was completely created by cursor plus MCP, which means completely created with AI. And all I had to give it is a link to this Figma source. So I just did go ahead into this, the design in here, the frame, right click, go ahead and copy link to selection and went back to cursor in here and I said, oh, can you please go ahead and convert this Figma design exactly as it looks? And he pasted the link in there, clicks enter, just went out to, you know, grab my coffee, came back in here and I found that I actually created the whole thing in here. It's not like a static image, it's creating here, it's actual text. The button is hoverable in here, you can click the button, everything is there. Even downloaded the images for me automatically. So yeah, I mean, all of this has been created using cursor plus MCP. And I'm pretty sure if you guys have heard about MCP quite a lot, especially if you've been around Twitter this past couple of days or weeks, it's been trending thing. A lot of people have been going crazy about MCP and how cool it is. Well, if you're not familiar with MCP, I'm just gonna give you a quick, quick intro of what MCP is and how it does work. So the official website for MCP's model context protocol Io. And you can go there to learn more about introduction, the different SDKs that are available, and yada, yada, yada. And it was originally created by the guys behind Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, which is Anthropic, which is absolutely great. It's open source as well. So you can check it out on GitHub in here. Um, like, you know, the, I don't think it's actually open source by open source, but they have all the SDKs open source. So this, even the specification is open source. So I guess, yeah, everything is open source. So MCP in here stands for Model Context Protocol, or shortcut of an MCP. And I love the explanation they gave in here, which is great. So MCP is like a protocol that standardizes how applications provide context to LLMs, which is very, very important. If you're not familiar with like how LLMs work, providing the right context to LLMs allows them to do or whether make it or break it. So if you want to like, for example, convert a design from Figma into your React code and make it into your project, providing the right context into the LLM will actually either going to give you the perfect cool design or just going to make you really bad results or give you really bad results. And as they explained it in here, MCP is like USB type C. And who doesn't like USB type C? I mean, you can plug it anywhere, everywhere, and you can just carry on one cable with you and you can just like, charge and use it with all your peripherals, with all your like phones and stuff like that, which is great. And that's exactly what MCP is. It can be integrated and used with any kind of LLM. It's kind of like a standardized protocol that allows you to transfer context or data into those LLMs. And the architecture of MCP is pretty simple. You can even develop your own MCPs. So they consist of like MCP host, MCP client, MCP servers, and there's like the local data sources and remote services. And all of those like they all revolve around just like MCP servers and clients. So if you take, for example, a cloth, desktop, or IDEs like Cursor, which we're going to use today, they are mainly like host and clients at the same time, which allows them to interact with MCP servers. And MCP servers are going to be like the ones they're going to interact with the underlying LLMs to provide context or execute different actions like tools. For example, if you're going to calculate like one plus one and the LLM doesn't know to do that, so you can provide the tool through MCP and you can do the calculations on the server for like using JavaScript, doing one plus one and returning the results. Simple as that. But of course it's a lot more complicated and you can do way, way much better from this. There are plenty of examples, you can read more about it, but that's pretty much all you need to know about MCP. It's pretty simple. You can imagine REST API, but for LLMs to communicate. And of course there are plenty of different MCPs like made by people, which are mainly MCP servers. For example, like the MCP that we've just used to convert the Figma design into a React code that runs into our, in our like projects, which called the Figma context MCP in here, which is like open source on GitHub in here. You can go in and access out, you can try it, you can use it. Uh, it can be used like with Cursor, Windsurf, Klein, any like client that supports the MCP protocol, which most of them are nowadays. And all you simply need to do is just run this command in here to run a local host server that are gonna interact with the MCP, providing it your Figma API key, and that's all you need. So we're gonna do that in a second after checking out this really cool directory in here of different MCPs that could be used through like cursor and other IDEs as well. So shout out to my colleague and friend, Sean, for showing me this really awesome website in here. Uh, he sent it to me like the other day and it was like, oh my God, this, this is really good. I got to I gotta use this. So yeah, if you go to cursor.directory in here, if you go to MCPs, you're gonna find 
uh, awesome list of MCPs that you could use from like using Google GCP to Google Drive, Puppeteer, to do with Docker, many, many more. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna find a lot more added into this. There are actually Figma, Postgres, GitHub as well. Like you can even give cursor and the AI LLM like interaction with your GitHub to create pull requests, even go ahead and review pull request. It is crazy, absolutely. So this is the Figma MCP. And if you click on it, it's gonna show you how to install it and everything. I'm gonna walk you through the installation steps in here, but it is very simple. So I'm gonna go back into the Figma MCP in here. Well, this one is actually very straightforward because it's hosted in NPM. So all you have to do is run this command in here, provide on your Figma API key. So you can grab your Figma API key from your Figma account. So if you go to security tab, you can generate an API key, it's free. So, and it's of course related to your account. So once you do that, you go back to cursor in here and you head out to the settings. So you can go to the top in here, open cursor settings. And I had to zoom in a little in here. So for you guys to check it out. So I have the pro, I don't think if it works for the others, uh, obviously it's gonna be with the pro one. So I already have the MCP added, but the gist of it in here is you go ahead and add a new MCP server. It's gonna ask you for the server name in here. You can name it whatever you want. And there are two types, a command in here or SSE, which for which stands for a server sent events that is just basically a local host server or a remote server that has SSE. So for us, we're gonna choose SSC in here and give it the endpoint to run the Figma MCP in here. So you simply, you can go ahead and do PMPX, Figma developer MCP, and you give it dash dash Figma dash API key. And here you pr like paste your Figma API key pretty much. So once you do that, you're gonna have a server starting for you on port 3333 43s with a Figma API key. It's gonna start with initializing the MCP server. It's gonna start the SSE endpoint available at the local host. And that's exactly what we need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this one. It should be always standardized the same way. It's always gonna be like forward slash SSE in here. So you go back in here and go to the command. We paste that one in here. It's gonna automatically detect it's an SSE and you can give it just like a name as a Figma something, okay? And you hit add, as simple as that. And because we've already done that for, you know, here, I just need to like refresh the service. Please in here like there's new SSE connection established and you should see that as soon as like you add this to cursor, that means the connection has been successfully established and the server is working. And uh, apparently in here, for the different tools that are available through this MCP, there are actually two MCP Figma data and download Figma images, okay? So it will be able to like read the data from your Figma designs, like when you give it a link and it will be able to actually download all the images on that design for you on your projects, which is amazing. All right, so once you set up this one, you're good to go. Um, I recommend for different models in here, if you have the pro version to use Cloud 3.7 Sonnet thinking, 3.7 Sonnet or 3.5 Sonnet. I have tried 3.5 Sonnet thinking and I found it's the best among the Sonnet family, but of course it varies from time to time. Um, so let's go ahead and back in here. I don't need this one. So I'm trying to put this one in here. So let me just go ahead and do, I'm gonna copy this one, you know? I don't wanna recreate the same thing. I'm gonna do a new chat. I'm gonna paste the same thing in here. So let's go back to Chrome. And I have this other um, landing page that I found on Figma. It looks pretty complicated though. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's pretty big. Uh, it has a lot of images and stuff. So I'm, I'm assuming this will take some time to process. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I've tested two before they worked somewhat good, including the minimal one that I've just shown you at the start of the video. Works absolutely incredible, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this one. So I'm gonna go to home, copy as, copy link to selection. I'm gonna go back in here, click enter, and let it start working, okay? Um, so it's gonna start thinking, I'm using 3.7 Sonnet thinking to start thinking. It's gonna actually, whenever it tries to call to, for example, get Figma data, it's gonna ask you for that to give it permission to do so, which is great. So I'm gonna click run tool in here and it's gonna go ahead and run the tool in here or basically just gonna fetch the data from that. So if you check out your logs for your MCP server, there is successfully fetched file, you know, the file name in here. And uh, now I need to download some images from the Figma design to use in our implementation. And it's gonna actually call the other images download tool for you. And it's gonna ask you, of course, your permission. Here, you click run tool in here and it's gonna start downloading the images. So I'm gonna skip through this part of the video until it finishes because it, of course it's gonna take some time for LLM to think and do all that kind of stuff. All right, so cursor is done after like, I don't know, what, five minutes of working and thinking. Uh, of course, it's a pretty long and pretty big uh, Figma design, but I just wanna show you guys the results. 
first in here without doing or making any adjustments. So this is actually where I've got by just one shot command and just like one shot, literally. Uh, we've got the logo in here, the buttons in here like working. Uh, this is being taken as a button in here, missing images, but the layout is still there. So it's not a big a problem. Everything in here from a layout perspective is there. Those like literally everything, the color in here is perfect. Uh, the image in here is being got, the section is perfect. Here, almost perfect, just a little pad in. All of these are perfect, like this one. And it works, like the accordion in here, if you click on it, it expands and it collapses. Amazing as well. The team section, great. I mean, it looks exactly like the design, right? I mean, look at this, this team. Oh, no, sorry, not exactly. I haven't checked this team section. Well, they're missing this, they're missing the creative touch into it. I mean, you're still working with like a, an AI LLM, right? Uh, I mean, getting these, getting into this stage, that's just perfect with one shot command. Dude, that's um, mind blowing. That's that's gonna change quite a lot of stuff. I mean, you can start with this and you could fix a lot of issues, of course, but you can end up with a design, like you, you can finish everything in one day, like the whole landing page, instead of spending a week or two weeks. Crazy, right? The footer in here has some adjustments that needs to be done, but all of that, just like simple layout stuff, but I mean, I love this. I, I am like, wow. I remember like two years ago, or even three years ago, I've tried this Figma tool that allows you to like convert Figma designs into React code. It was absolutely ridiculous. Like the code looked nowhere near this, nowhere as clean code as this with this perfect everything, almost everything, with the components in here pretty well made, the states, it was absolutely awful code to look at. And the designs weren't even close to something like this. They were absolutely rubbish. So yeah, I am like, this is amazing, okay? So uh, looking back at the images in here, it looks like they are in the public folder, but some of them, like some of these VGs are like binary. I don't know exactly what's going on though, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and accept in here. I am gonna accept all, uh, so it should be good, but I gotta go ahead and check out, or at least tell it to go ahead and fix the images. So the images are missing and not correctly placed. Can you please double check with Figma design and make sure the images are downloaded and placed correct locations. Okay, I'm gonna click enter in here and uh, let's hope it's proactive and it's gonna, it's gonna fix that for us. Oh yeah, while it's doing this job, uh, well, I should just go ahead and look into like the components in here. I mean, the components are pretty well made, like further in here, it's own components. Yeah, I have this bugging cursor, which is awful, but sorry for that. Uh, again, so gives the process, there's services. Yeah, I love the code structuring in here and everything put it together. Uh, UpTSX in here is gonna use a bunch of components together, which is again, I love that. I love the single responsibility principle in here from our solid principles, but yeah, it's asking me for a tool, download images, let me just give it the right to do so. All right, so he's done making the changes. Looking back at this, um, well, it tried to grab the image in here that looks like this. I think this is because an SVG is struggling, so it couldn't do that perfectly. Uh, it brought the brand images in here, like zoom, dribble, good. Those are images are still missing. Yeah, struggles with SVGs quite a lot. Um, yeah, those those are good, I believe so. Yeah, again, SVGs are like struggles, absolutely. Even the footer. Uh, oh, I think those are, SV are these images? Yeah, they're images. Not sure why they didn't place them, but yeah, I mean, for me, even if it were without images, because images could be easy place, right? And they are, you know, you could you could have the human creative touch into it, but most of the stuff in here, like input fields, look at this, the colors, literally everything, like the layout, the whole website's layout, the carousels in here, everything is really well put, because the layout is the, the one that's actually gonna make your life harder whenever you design a website or a landing page like this, images are easy. You can spend three hours and fix the images. So this is lovely. I mean, I really advise you to go, and go ahead and try this out for yourself. You're gonna be absolutely amazed. Oh yeah, I actually was experimenting with like hero sections and landing page before. I tried, for example, this food page in here and uh, the results were this, I mean, it's not perfect layout, it's taking the main image as a background, but it still looks pretty great. And then the layout is perfect. The images in here are put together as well, really well. The text is missing this red thing. But I mean, 
if I were to take this, it would be a great way to start your website. If you want to like quickly move your Figma designs into code, you could just like do it the first time, make sure to ask cursor as many questions and as many like adjustments as you want and get into like a, a decent place. Then you can just have the human touch into it, the creative touch into it, fixing images, fixing some bugs in here and there and making it perfect, of course. And of course, again, you can also ask cursor to make it responsive. I tried this before. It works pretty well. All right. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this MCP kind of video tutorial explanation, quick explanation of MCP, how it works. It's not a big of a deal. It may seem it is, but it's quite simple. If you're familiar with Rust, you're familiar with MCP, or you should be familiar with MCP, have the same pretty much client server context. And if you want more videos like this, exploring different MCPs and trying it with cursor and AI, let me know guys. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you all hopefully in the next one.